What's up, guys? It's Mitch here from the DIYrecordingstudio.com. And today I'm going to share a little trick with you guys on how to get your high quality audio into Zoom and Teams and all of those streaming services without needing to use anything like Voice Meter or Soundflower or Black Hole or any of those apps. So let's get into it. Now, some of you might be in the world that I am at the moment where I'm teaching online and I need to get high quality audio off to my students. And there's a couple of different ways we can do this, but the simplest way is to try and reroute your audio directly from your door and your microphone, your interface, and get that into the live stream. And typically we would be using something like voice meter. Um, I'm a PC user, so that's typically what I'm going to use, and I'll show you what that looks right, like right here. You might have something like this app, and basically it'll act as this kind of interim, and you can see my microphone's coming in here, and I can basically reroute that into apps like Teams or whatever, and it just picks up and sent, reroutes all the audio that you've got going on from your door and your interface um, to get that audio where you need it to go. And they're a very good solution. There's nothing wrong with using these apps. Um, I just wanted to try and find a way where we could try and bypass that because it's one less device in the way and it's one less piece of software that's actually mucking around with my audio and perhaps degrading it a little bit. So um, I wanted to find a way to get around that and I came across this kind of nifty little solution. So. So the trick is that you need an interface that can actually route its audio this way itself. And there are certain devices that have them. You might have an interface that has something called a loop playback, or if you're lucky enough to have an interface like I do from Antelope Audio, they have a very sophisticated routing, uh, routing matrix. So I'll show you that here. And basically all my mic preamps are here and I can send them to a bunch of different places. So um, what this kind of allows me to do is reroute all my audio and I can actually get my main mix that I hear, my monitor mix, and I can send that to another bunch of recording inputs and they're virtual inputs. They're not real inputs. They're not the inputs on my interface. They're these recording inputs. And basically that then can go into wherever I want it. It can go into OBS, it can go into Teams or Zoom or any live stream platforms, but it basically means you can get your audio rerouted into any place. So my interface is the Zen Tour. It's not a cheap interface, but there are some cheaper versions of this interface like the Zen Go, which is a very affordable two-channel interface that some of you might be looking at. So I would just suggest maybe having a look at that. Um, there's a couple other devices from Focusrite that have loop playbacks as well. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, but I'm going to show you the way I do it using my Zen Tour. And we're going to go from here. So what you can see here is I've actually taken my mix here, one and two, which then goes to my headphones. And it's basically what I'm going to hear in my headphones. But I've also sent that over to... USB record 7 and 8. Usually they would look something like this. You'd have mic preamp 7 and 8 floating around down here. And it would kind of just be... And you would have lost me there because basically I took away that audio that's then feeding my OBS. Um, so what we're really doing is just rerouting that into another couple of channels. Now, the cool thing about this interface and the Antelope products is that they've actually released a bunch of new drivers um, where we no longer have just the main stereo outputs. We actually have four pairs of stereo outputs, which you're seeing there. So if I go over to, for instance, my computer output or my speakers, you will see that I have playback one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And that's crucial because we're going to need that when we go into Microsoft Teams. Okay. And I'll show you that. So if I go into Teams and 
I'll bring up my Teams window. Okay, you can see that I would typically use Voice Meter, and I used Voice Meter for ages to get around this kind of issue. But what I figured out with this routing is now I can actually go and set my speaker to my regular interface playback. Okay, so the driver playback. All right, and that means I'm going to hear everything that I would normally hear coming through my computer, and that matches up with this down here. So um, Teams is outputting all my audio here, and I'm going to hear it from there back through my computer and back through my interface. Okay, so that's kind of that playback signal path. But the cool thing is now what I can do here is actually select Zentua 7.8, which matches up with the routing that we just kind of selected. And we'll see that my audio is now metering here. Okay, very, very cool stuff. That means that basically anything that you hear in your headphones is now going to 7 and 8 over here. Okay, on USB record 7 and 8. Very cool stuff. Very, very cool stuff. That doesn't apply just for my microphone. It applies to anything I hear in my headphones. So let's go to our Pro Tools session. Okay, and then you will see that if I go to my uh, my playback engine, I'm just set to my regular Zentua driver. Okay, I'm not going to anything funky there. Okay, and basically it's just going to go to my main outputs over here. You can see output one and two, and because I'm going to hear this in my headphones, it's going to then reroute that output through the Zen tour here, mix one and two, which goes to my headphones, but it's now also routing down to the USB record seven and eight. And I'm doing the same exact thing that you would hear in Teams, I'm actually doing in OBS. Okay, and I'll share that screen with you in a second. Um, but let's just listen to Pro Tools just to hear that audio there for a second. So you can hear that audio is routing in there. Great. Okay. Very, very cool. So I'll show you. We'll go over to OBS for a second. I'll drag that up. And the screen will get a bit weird when I do this. Cool. So we're in OBS now. And you can see my microphone down here. Okay, is going through my Cubase. I've called this Cubase because generally I use Cubase. <laughs> I really should rename this to, let's change that to, oh, there, DAW Audio. Cool. That makes a bit more sense. <laughs> cool. And then when I play Pro Tools, We can see the audio that's here. My lonely days are over. And life is like a song. Cool. So, um, let me just get back out of that screen for a second. Cool. So what you're seeing there is the same as what I would end up with in Teams. So all my Pro Tools audio, my DAW audio, whether it be Ableton, Cubase, Pro Tools, whatever I'm teaching, now will go straight into the stream and bypass completely the need for apps like Voice Meter or Soundflower or any of those apps that are going to um, get in the way of our audio and be a bit clunky to use. This is a much simpler software solution where you can just use the regular interface and your regular mix control software for whatever uh, interface you're using. But I do understand that there's that caveat that not all interfaces can do this. Some might just allow you to um, 
have your microphone go in and maybe get playback, but not get the door going through all this routing because it is a bit of a complicated setup. But if you're lucky enough to have a Zen Tour like me or the Zen Go or any of those newer devices or a device with a loop playback function like some of the Focusrite interfaces and there's a few others out there as well, this might be something that you want to try. That's just a cool little trick for today I thought I'd share with you all. If you're trying to do live streaming like a lot of us are, it might help you out, it might not. Let me know in the comment sections down below if this has helped you out at all or if you have another interesting solution for your setup at home because I'm always looking to find better ways to get this stuff running. But this is definitely the way for now that I'm going to be running my live streams and my classes online and all that kind of stuff. And if you have any further questions, don't forget to hit me up in those comment sections down below. And also don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and I'll catch you soon.